Hello everyone, I'm Ted Kinsman. I'm a professor here at RIT, specializing in photographic sciences. And today we're going to go through the basics of how to set up a polarization interferometer and see what an interferometer can do. And to start the process, we're going to start with a six volt LED light, and it's gonna be going through a 80 millimeter lens, and we will start up with that. So here we got the power supply on six volts, and we'll turn on the LED so you can see what it looks like. And it's pretty bright. And we'll, we can always change the current limiting uh, to get it even brighter. And uh, also it's a six volt, so we can actually bring it up closer to six volts so it's brighter. So I'm gonna put it on its, its control tube and I'm gonna tape it down and we will start to align it. Now, before I put this lens in its correct position, I'm going to put the Wallerstein prism positioner in place. It's going to live back here in this position. And there's a hole here that I can put the Wollaston prism in and uh, rotate it. And so I'm going to be shooting the, ray, the beam of light right through this hole. And the mirror is out there. This Wollaston prism is going to be exactly at the 2F position for the mirror. And I'll put some specs on what that mirror is. Uh, now it's time to align the light source with a mirror and I have a 50-50 beam splitter mirror here. It's uh, supplied from uh, Edmund Scientific. And what I'm gonna do is align it so it shoots that light right down and fills up the aperture of the mirror. This is the first of the important alignments. And the first thing to do here is I'm gonna cover that mirror with a sheet of white paper. I'm gonna turn off the lab lights. And then I am going to align that I'm going to align that beam splitter so that we have full coverage of that piece of white paper. And there's that white paper. I take it out of the way and we can see that it is really pretty well centered on the mirror. So that alignment is really critical. We want to make sure we've got that fully covered so that we can see all the light hitting the mirror. So here we are back at the beam splitter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt out down the beam splitter so that it's not going to move anywhere. Um, so I tighten this down, I tighten this down, and we know that this light path comes through here and then it's going to go through the place where the Wallstone prism is going to be in a minute or two. For the initial alignment of this, what I have is a mount made for a Canon 5D camera, which is just one of the lab cameras. At this point, I can explain some of the polarizers. This is a millimeter, 300 millimeter, is that it matches the numerical aperture of the lens. So when you design these systems, you want whatever lens you're using to match the optics. And the mirrors are very expensive if you go with high, um, large surfaces or, or low F numbers. So uh, you kind of figure out what optics you have and match them for the design. The other thing I'm going to put in here is a polarizer, and this polarizer doesn't matter what angle it is because I'm, there's also a polarizer here. This is a circular polarizer. Um, it could be a linear polarizer. It just happens this one fits. Um, and I'm going to put this polarizer in front of my light source. So it's going to live right in this, this area here. So it doesn't really matter at the orientation of this polarizer. I'm just going to place it in there and then we will adjust everybody else so that it works. The next thing is I haven't bolted this, this light tube down yet because I wanna make sure it aligns with the mirror. I'm gonna bolt it down once I've aligned it through the camera here and I put the Wollaston prism in. So here's the Wollaston prism that I ground and uh, we'll look at it underneath the light table and see what the orientation of it is. It's splitting the light into two rays this way and this way, the, the ordinary and the extraordinary ray. And I'm going to tape it down to this cone. So this is a, a, a prism that's been ground to explain Wollaston prisms and interferometers for students. So at this point in the alignment process, you think you're all done, but it's not really the case. So we've got the Wollaston prism in, we've got the beam uh, splitter, we've got the focus. And I've, what I've done right now is I've focused this 80 millimeter lens right on the front of this Wollaston prism. I'm going to move it around a little bit, but it turns out this focus doesn't particularly matter much, but I'm just going to put it at a place where it gets started and I'm going to defocus the system by changing that Wollaston prism around. 
The next thing I'm going to do is realign the system by making sure that the beam hits the center of the mirror. Because after you've moved all this stuff around, if it's not on the exact center of the mirror, we can't align the mirror in the interferometry system. So I'm going to lock this light source down, and now I'm going to realign this beam splitter for the next part. And when I do this, we're going to go back to a dark room again, and we're going to make sure that this white card, the light source, fills this up. And you can see that the light source is not aligned correctly, so this has to be about right there in the position, so filling up the center of the mirror, and I'm going to lock that beam splitter down so it can't move around, and now I am ready for the next step. It turns out this next step, you can actually do this with the lights on after we've re-lined this, aligning the mirror with the system. And the system is changing these positions so that the two light rays exactly overlap each other. And this is really best done by putting the camera on some sort of remote viewer, um, a, a, a view screen or plugging into a camera screen. So you can look at that camera screen as you are aligning everything. So at this point, we're gonna turn on the video camera here from our, our lens and we'll see what we see with that, and we'll, we'll go through some different uh, defocusing, and we'll look at what the Wollaston prism can do. But once you start to see these colors, you know you're very close. And now we're within range of using the micrometers to move that Wollaston prism back and forth. That's gonna be really close to where we want. And now I'm gonna change these, I'm gonna change the polarizer on the front of the camera to get the best position. This is the zero order right now where the Wollaston is looking straight down the center and uh, we can move the Wollaston back and forth to either focus it or defocus it and we'll see what happens when we do that. Here's, uh, we're going to bring it a little bit closer and when we do that we can get one fringe to completely fill up the screen and there's, uh, most people like that purple one. So we're gonna keep it on that purple. So at this point, we can leave the room lights on. We can change the position of this Wollaston prism back and forth to either focus it or defocus it to see what happens with the fringes. And we can also change the exposure on our camera and we'll go back and forth. But with the room lights on, I will see a lot of lens flare um, I will see a lot of uh, blown out images on the edges of the object from the scattered light from the room. But what we're going to do now is we're going to put an object out there that we can look at. The first object that we're going to look at is this little tiny screw mount. It's just a, a little screw and it's placed right in the exact center of the mirror. And the idea for this is we will be able to see how that polarization is split into two different images and as we and so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at that bolt and we're going to change our polarizer and we'll actually focus in on that bolt which is at the low part of the screen and and the idea here is that we're going to focus in on that bolt just the edge of that bolt which is somewhere like that and then I'm going to move this polarizer on the front of the lens and we can see what happens when we go from one image to the other. So there's the, the left image and as I rotate it to the other side, we get the other image. And what we want to do is we want to split the two images like this for maximum color and I'll take a still shot of this. And We can look close at that still image and get an idea of what uh, the angular uh, difference between the two light paths is. So going back here to a video, and we're at uh, pretty, uh, a lot of light in the video, but we could use more. Uh, right now, one of the things that you really wanna do 
is you want to be able to from the mirror but um, we're gonna leave it there and of course one of the standards for looking at the sensitivity of a Schlieren system or one of the characteristics is if I put my hand out here you can easily see the heat rising off my hand which should be nice and colorful And of course, there's a lot of classic shots. One in particular is the lighter. So there's the lighter. As we move it back and forth, it works really well. And we can see that heat coming off of the lighter. And if I don't have the lighter turned on, and I just do the, the gas coming out of the lighter, you can also see that very well. Keep in mind that this image does have two images for the shadows, and people often find that very disturbing. And at this point, one of the classic things to do is to light a candle and to put it in that Schlarian system, light the candle and put it in the polarization interferometer and see all the light coming off of it. And in this case, it's pretty zoomed in. We'll zoom out a bit so we can see that whole candle and now what I'm going to do is I will move that prism back and forth. You can see those different colors that are generated. And I'm going to defocus the system. I defocus that system by moving that Wollaston further from everything, further from that beam splitter. And you can see that the Wollaston is not centered with this particular alignment. And I'm gonna bring that zero order, which is right there in the middle, and that will give me maximum color for this system. And then once again, if I want to focus it back, I'm going to bring that Wollaston prism closer to that beam splitter to try to get maximum color. And most people like that purple, so I'll put that purple bluish edge right there. And there is our beautiful polarization interferometer. And you can see that that candle flame is, is like a cylinder of index changes in the vertical direction and this prism shows that that becomes very sensitive there. So I'm going to refocus the Wollaston now as I go right into the, that purple. Where is that purple band? There's the purple. And I'm also, um, I'll leave it there. By the way, I'm right here, I'm at F4.5 uh, and I'm at ISO 500 and this is a Wallerstein prism. The Wallerstein prism is made out of two quartz wedges and the angle between each of the quartz is five degrees. And there you have a description of a polarization interferometer, how to set it up and a little bit of what it does. Keep in mind that this was a five degree angle in the quartz Wallerstein prism and most prisms are much smaller angles than that. So I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully you get a chance to build your own polarization interferometer.